Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about functional CSS and its role in web development, especially nowadays, as the web development has matured quite a bit. And what part functional CSS plays in it? Usually I don't like to do PowerPoint presentations, but today's an experiment. I'll do it. Later on, we'll do some coding as well. I promise, uh, but let's just bear with me for a few seconds while I explain this concept. And by the way, this particular fruit here, it's called, it's a Chinese food called rambutan, and uh, it looks messy from outside, but once you cut it open, uh, open the layer, uh, then it's sweet from inside. So uh, functional CSS is pretty much like that. In essence, it looks messy from outside when you look at it, but once you start using it, it's pretty sweet. And today my job is to convince that. So welcome to Texas Tutorials. Okay, so what is functional CSS really means? Functional CSS is one of the CSS methodology. It's basically a pattern that you use, a common pattern that you use across your project. So everybody follows it. And if you do that, then the magic would happen, less problems. And those who worked in a web development project probably know that CSS can be really tough especially if you have multiple team members and they are using their own way of doing things. And ultimately, you will pay the price. And what price you would pay? Well, your application will be scalable and maintainable. Somebody new coming in uh, would have a hard time uh, working with your CSS because they don't know where to add stuff, right? And they can easily break things. So that's why CSS uh, methodology would help you make your project scalable in terms of CSS and also maintainable for long term. So let's look at some of the important ones. Uh, there is a BEM, block, element, and modifier. Now I'm not gonna go too deep into them. Uh, block, uh, element, and modifier means uh, the way you name your classes. If you have a block, let's say if you have a list, that's a block. Uh, each list item would be an element. And modifier would be, let's say, if you have a disable uh, or enabled on hover, uh, that would be your modifier because it changes your behavior. Then there is also object-oriented CSS, OOCSS. Uh, that was also very famous some time ago. And then there is atomic CSS. That was, I believe, in invented by Yahoo. And now that atomic CSS is now called functional CSS, or it's a variant of uh, the atomic CSS that we call it a functional CSS. Now, those who have already seen functional CSS from far away, they would say that it's inline style everywhere. I would disagree with it because yes, it looks quite verbose because there are lots of classes used everywhere, but it's not inline style everywhere. So it's, it's, it's misconception right there. And as I said, it's going to look messy from outside, but once you start using it, it's pretty sweet. So let's look at an example. A concept like this is very hard to explain with a small example. Uh, you have to actually experience it yourself, but I'll try to do uh, the best I can to explain this uh, with a small example, and hopefully you'll understand it. So let's start with uh, a div, let's say some class. All right, and it says, I am so pretty. All right, so it shows up something like this. Okay, it's pretty plain. So let's add some style to this sum class. Say make it color is blue, and we can add some border. but pretty ugly button. Okay. So besides the ugliness of it, uh, what is the problem with this statement? Here I have this class, some class, and I, I define a class because I can use it somewhere else. And I need to use it exactly like that uh, somewhere else. I can override it and all that stuff, some styles. Uh, but wherever I define this some class, it would give me the exactly the same button. So let's create another button and I'm going to have the same class, some class, 
and it's gonna say I am pretty too. This two are right now in the same page, but imagine there are different pages and this is a quite commonly used button. And you hire some guy and tell him to change, um, you know, hey, say I need a different color for this particular button, which says I am pretty too. Okay. He simply, he, he goes, he traces where this is coming from and he would say, okay, it's coming from some class. So all I need to do is change the color from blue to let's say yellow. Now the problem is now everywhere you have used this class, it has changed the color to yellow, which is not something you want. And this is just a color. Imagine if it changes few other uh, properties and it could break the entire website. And that has happened and you've probably seen it too. So yeah, there are some other ways to do it. Uh, fix this problem, right? You can use SAS and you can use something else. And the biggest problem of this behavior is that something that used to work now is breaking because you're trying to change something. So you have regression and a lot of time this kind of regression is not caught by your automation test or uh, only probably manual QA. And if you have, let's say, CICD pipeline, this will just go through without any problem and everything is broken, obviously, right? So let's change this into functional CSS. So what I'll do is for each of these item, I'm going to create a class. Okay, so let's do it. So font size 20, I'm going to create a class called font 20 and or let's just call it 30 actually. Okay, so now we have class for each style. Remember I told you that class is everywhere. So this is a result of it. And now what I'm gonna do is instead of this class, now again, if I wanna fit all of this here, cause I have to apply all of these here, uh, I have to probably shorten it. So I can call it F30, uh, let's say TX, TXT blue, txt yellow brd border 30 then text blue I also need the same class here except this one will have yellow text so here I can say yellow all right so your HTML looks quite verbose because of this class stuff right let's run this so I have two separate buttons now and it works fine now you're gonna be thinking this is madness why would someone in their right state of mind would do something like this so let's look at some reasons first of all these are abbreviated. So you can actually abbreviate further if you want to. Uh, so this would look much smaller. Yes, you lose the readability. That's the one thing that you would lose, but there are way more advantages. And we'll look at it, how, why? It solves a lot of our issues. You must be like, so what's the difference between this and inline style? I can simply put all those styles here, right? Well, first of all, if you put all those styles here, it would be, way more verbose than this. This is still shorter than writing all those inline style inside here. When you start your project, usually in a, in a solid project, you would have fixed number of fonts that are using uh, based on your design. For example, your style guide would say, okay, uh, for here, you're gonna use 30 pixel, here you're gonna use 20 or 60 or whatever. So you have fixed number of fonts they're going to be you're going to be using so you need to define that in advance so you'll have something like 
F30, F20, F40, whatever, right? You can name it according to the way you like. That means you have to use it. You cannot just add some style here and start saying, okay, my font would be uh, 75 pixels. You cannot do that. You have to use things through classes. And if I want to use a newer font, let's say 75, I have to get an approval because you would have a fixed style guide and which means only you can use it from only these fonts. So if you want to justify that I want to use 75 pixel, then you have to go through some sort of approval process to get it added in there. So you follow the guideline of whatever it's designed. Secondly, if a new guy comes in and he wants to build something, he doesn't have to really uh, look further. You will have fixed amount of colors like you will have because any website you will have maybe five or six colors that you're using everywhere. And so he doesn't have he or she doesn't have to guess that which color should I use. He can just pick from those colors. So that is a huge advantage. Another uh, good thing about this is let's say later on as a scalability issue, uh, later on your designer says, okay, we instead of using yellow, we are going to use a a shadow of different version of yellow. In that case, all you have to do is change one line and everywhere that yellow would change to that a different kind of yellow without breaking anything else because you have mapping of single class to a single property. That's why you can change it easily without any problem. You know that it's not gonna break anything else. Also, if you're using uh, inline styles, then you have to go through all those different places where you have used the colors and you have to change it, which is a lot of work, okay? And you can, you can mess stuff up in the process. Here, messing up is very low. And if you're using responsive design, you cannot really use uh, inline styles, but this would work because media rules and media carry cannot exist in inline style. So these are the advantages. Now let's look at how to build this. You can either build this or you, there are actually pre-built libra libraries available. So if you go to take, if you go to tachyons.io, you will have this already pre-built library available. And if I go to the style guide, I would see this again. It's something that they're using. You can actually either, if you have a small project and if you just want a quick start, you can download this and modify uh, some of this stuff to make your own world. So you don't have to remember all this stuff, you just have to remember F1 to F6. And this would be in your style guide, so it's easy to reference from there. So people who are using it have the same reference, so they are using this as same everywhere. And maybe uh, I'll make another video on how to use actually Tachyon and actually build a simple project using functional CSS uh, and Tachyons. There is also another website called Tailwind CSS. It's similar to uh, Tachyons. And as you can see, it's using the same functional CSS content, a concept. It's pretty useful. And once you start using it, as I said, you will know. Uh, me showing you a simple example like this always makes you think twice and say, hey, this, this looks quite ugly. As I said, like that fruit, right? It looks ugly in the, uh, when you look at it. Once you get used to it, it's pretty solid and it's maintainable and it's scalable. And that's the two, two keyword I would, I would put. If you have a question, do ask me. And if you're using different uh, methodology on CSS, please let me know and how it, uh, useful it is and why you are using it so that I can share with my audience. And I hope you learned something from this video. And if you did, please like. Don't forget to like, because it takes a few seconds. Like, comment, and subscribe. And you can help the channel via Patreon, and also by translating this video uh, to your native language. It's pretty simple, and uh, the information is in the description. And thank you.